Hello, Nadereer, and welcome back to Path of Exile. We are in the Lunaris Temple, on our way to a meeting with Piety. And as with most meetings with people that have a, a red health bar and a name that's rather unique, she's not going to like it. Hello there, Kuto. And there is... Are you part of the same chest? Yeah, it's all the same minions, I think. Oh no, that's actually a second. Cool. Why are you guys all coming from the side? What's over there that makes it all so cool? Is this where the cool kids hang out? I have no idea. Let's look for the horde. Yes. And ding it. That's what I was hoping for. I actually wanted to level up before facing a piety. The reason is that we made it to constitution. This is going to be a boatload of extra life. 3186 becomes a 3440. We gain 260 life with a single point invested. That's efficiency for you. Oh, that was flash hunt. <laughs> accidentally, I've almost accidentally killed him without realizing. Stone Golem, this is gonna bump him over. The, the threshold so we got the blood ray actually for now let's keep the golem also where he is I think molten shell also needs to be held back a little bit then we can all keep it in line with the cast and damage taken setup being within reasonable bounds I finally have it back now that it will cast twice before I die. Not that I plan on dying, but no. If you face it off against just my full kill a monster possessed by a tormented blasphemer. That just works. Just do that. We seem to have lost our minion. They ate my golem. Also, looking for the torture chamber. Yes, hello Cole, how are you today? So I'm fully buffed up. I'm not drinking my flask. I take about uh, less than a thousand. I take about 800 points of damage from his hits. That seems reasonable. Roughly the same amount of damage you take on normal when you don't have armor. But yeah, we're still monstrous in regards to tanking. So, life is good when your tank is good. actually managed to make the blood rage stick for a while. Of course, killing it refreshes it, which is a good thing. And the higher level we get, the longer it lasts, which is actually rather nice. So you can bridge the time between the packs a bit better. There's the waypoint. How full are we? Uh, might might as well make a quick town stop. Yes, what is it? Uh, okay, sure. Nothing truly exciting. Put this one in here. Useful items in there. I'm trying to stock up a little bit on the on these divine flasks. 
Lone Irish Temple. Just so I can craft them and get a full set of uh, useful flasks again. Let's do a little bit of uh, the healing than the level 40 flasks I was using before. But one of the good things is that the flasks, after a certain point, they, they scale reasonably well. I think the level 4 uh, or the level 40-ish flasks, they restore about 1800 life. The level 60 ones, they restore 2400 life. So that's only a third extra. And the trade-off is that you need more charges to fully refill them. So there is actually an efficiency argument you could make for the lower tier flasks. Uh, another one. So it also means that yeah, the, they, they remain useful for a longer time. So it's easier to scale and you're not punished as much for not finding better ones. Oh. There's a damage reflector in here, a loader. Yes, that's what I would say as well. And we go up one level. Uh, having tons of armor, so empowering. I'm very, I'm very happy with my experience playing my shadow, but. Oh, is it nice to play a heavily armored build again. Being able to tank a lot of things, especially those, uh, those shooters, the tentacled miscreations. It's very nice. Very nice. Not a level up. Good. And once more, and I think we are in the prison area. Leveling our totem just because we can. And release splash. That's also for the totem. And another step upwards. Good. Render's Horde, the Golden Horde, the hey we're not killing your frame rate today re uh, Horde, these were actually okay then, or you just get a superior sweep, it's like sweep but better. These had the potential to be very, very damaging, but damage was actually pretty okay. Oh, max out fire resist helps, right? It really helps. Kelp clatter. That's a interesting name to give to your child. Wow, there's blood columns over here that belong to the to the box. The box that didn't drop anything interesting. Of course it didn't. Oh well. I'm gonna get to piety, that's the important bit. Come on, click. 
Ooh, fusion. Okay, this is not it. Let's head back this way. I got a feeling it's in this direction. So. Oh, strongbox. Ooh, armor strongbox. Yeah, weren't a lot of them left. Oh. Damage reflector. How cute. And a necro circlet. Okay, let's go there. Go there. Go there. Yes, big gates. Good, good. Pop, pop, pop. Elementals. Of course. Piety is in our reach. Let's see how it turns out. I mean, I'm currently feeling very confident and that's often the worst mindset you can have for any kind of boss battle. Just because I'm, I'm just mowing through things. I mean, the juggernaut cannot be stopped, will not be stopped. Totem next to her. Starts pressing her skull. Keep her charges up. Now the totem again. Keep her charges up. <laughs> that was piety. <laughs> I guess my uh, my sense of. Uh, Confidence was warranted. So, can we stack this in a slightly creative way? Check out the gavel. So, space for a couple more things. I right, actually check out this one because we have the omen wand and we need the tower key, of course. And then the rest is just too bad for them. So that was Piety. We're about halfway through the episode. So there you are. Meh, uh, majestic plates. Overlooked in this one. Okay, this was just not quite bad. Everything else kind of blows. Okay. This. And we forgot about a couple of crafting mods. That's okay though. Put them in the box now. Okay. Maramawa, hello there. Why are you stupid? Hagen, hello there. So Geiger has the skill points. Be careful. Unfortunate. So bomb. Um, yeah. So ten percent extra life on top. It's almost thirty six hundred life. Pretty cool. So let's get going. Oh, we. Yeah, let's uh, have a run. Ah, this is a Torah thing. Gotta completely ignore it for this time, this time though. Unless he happens to be standing here next to the entrance. Otherwise, sucks to be Torah. Yep, no Torah, we don't do it. So, we uh, got a waypoint to grab. And then we're probably just gonna go for Dominus. 
Piety, Dominus, let's just do it. Kill all the bosses, I'd say. And then next episode, have a look at the library. We got the the archives, we got the, the, the hatch library, the, the trial, the final trial. And of course we have the labyrinth. I think we have actually technically already unlocked it. Just have to talk with uh, Lady Diala and we'll just be able to be able to just be let in. Okay. Thistle Sage. my life regen like almost 400 life regenerated per second right now that's of course with the with the golem who contributes 81 but still means uh, almost 320 is my own a vile touch here go touch the totem or just stay stun locked I'm fine with that as well Unlock the god, scepter, uh, scepter of God. The Karui do not hide in towers. Just the regular hits. They're stunning, like quite a large area already with every single hit just all the way over there <laughs> that's just a regular impact that's not even the big explosion I wonder if the Herald of Ash uh, if it was actually cold based now it would be chilling everything with a chance of freezing everything that would be pretty cool. I think Herald of Frost is... The damage on it is a bit low. So I'm not quite sure if the... If the Frost effect actually kicks in a lot. Which is why I'm actually pretty really reluctant to use it in, in most builds. You, know, you might use it on, on builds uh, that do a lot of small attacks. Uh, something like... Uh, it's very nice or... Kind of archer builds. Or if you're already uh, doing frost damage, of course that's the that's the obvious winner. If you're already doing frost damage and a herald of ice, cold, frost, something, it's gonna be good for you. Since you already do the freezing, so you will get the explosions. But as an add-on to a build that's not cold centered by default, that's tricky. And there's no real efficient way to, to add a bunch of cold damage other than, let's say, the added cold damage gem or uh, hatred aura, but that preserves. Was this? I think it was hatred. But that preserves 50% of your mana, so. That's rather annoying. Means you have to give up a lot of interesting and defensive options. So yeah, a little bit of fire, the damage from the Herald of Ash is all it's going to be. Also, this build doesn't really scale elemental damage in any way, shape or form. So all the points of cold damage I would add to the build, they would more or less just stay intact the way they are. There's no no amplification, there's no bonuses. And then of course it's pretty hard to chill monsters if you're not doing a ton of damage. Ah, a fractured mob. This is probably gonna be a popcorn effect. I kill him and then mods explode all over. Yes. Would that be mobcorn then, actually? If you have mob or popcorn? Ok, 
Curse immune. Well, you are, but your buddies aren't. I only need a couple kills to keep my endurance charges topped off. I imagine curse immune maps are gonna be annoying. Since Warlord's Mark is currently my main source of leech for both life and mana. And there is the Upper Scepter of God. Let's go say hello to Dominus. There's another horde on the other side of the, of the door, it seems. Ooh, healing of souls. Okay. Nice amount of coins. Meritania, Volt Binder. Also, Vera, the indebted aristocrat. I think I locked them back in their horrendous coffer. Ooh, coffers. And now I remember I was actually going to pl uh, was planning on changing my loot filter to make these things a bit bigger so they're easier to click in situations like this. Guess I'll have to remember that for the next episodes. That's the downside, of course, of uh, recording ep multiple episodes in a row. Once you're on a roll, you don't really want to stop, you're just going. Horrendous chests. A couple coins. That's 234 coins. A hey, nice number, 234. Can I keep running past the outsides of the map? And here we have to go back in. Bones of Chaos ahead. Yeah, let's say hello here. Bones of Chaos and uh, ranged enemies is also interesting because you know, their AI is gonna push them back. So they're never really gonna optimally use it by just running around you and slicing through you from all sides. So a rather convenient spawn. staircase. This is the last one then. Life gain on hit, that's good. Ah yes. Scion cage. And then we are there. Donus. Here we go. 
I exiled an animal. Juggernaut will Now not be stopped, cannot be stopped. Come at me. All of you. Same time. Come on. Don't be shy. That was the first wave. Come on. Keep it going. Don't want my charges to go to waste. Uh, this feels like it's. It's almost like it's just unfair. Okay, I have some issues with lightning damage. Lightning is the only resistance I'm not fully resisting, but. On the other hand, with my endurance charges, I should be good. Okay, so hand of the touch of God is actually resistible. Die! The touch of God. Well, on the other hand, if I don't have to tank it, let's not try my luck too much. We got him now. Okay. Ah, this world is an illusion, exile. Theory. He's a boss. Bosses have heavy high, high resistance to curses, which means my life leech is going to be less efficient because it is based off of a curse. That's a, a theory that might work, so I have less life regained that way. Okay. Gonna have to keep an eye out for my debuffs, but it looks like the the blood falls off pretty quickly. The corrupted blood. Four stacks. One stack. I cannot do this yet. I mean, I can tank about four or five stacks of corrupted blood. My regen will counteract that. Above that, though, I need to drink a potion to cleanse it, because otherwise it's just. Not gonna work out very well. That was it. Dominus is dead. Ah, that was uh, that was interesting. Also, for a chromatic item, you're a bit big. So, obligatory filling with loot after defeating the boss. And then, hello there, Lady Diala. And then we find the exit to Act 4. So, nah. Yes. Good, good. Follow a dead river to the foot of Kitava's king. And that's gonna be it for this episode. So next episode we have... Let's see. I'm not entirely sure actually, because I'm not entirely sure if it's gonna be a good idea to run yes, the labyrinth already or if i want to postpone it again until mid act four i probably want to postpone it until mid act four just so i can get the, the skill points and just get uh, probably get one or two more levels but mostly you know the extra skill points um, chance of finding better gear being even more ready than uh, ever because I've seen videos of people fighting Merciless Zaro, and well, it's as brutal as on earlier difficulty levels. So yeah, um, caution might help me stay alive. But I'm gonna mull it over a bit. So thank you for watching, and uh, next episode you'll see what I have decided. Bye bye.